So, Joseph, welcome yes. and please tell us something more about <coughs> stack VLAN based modeling of hybrid ISP traffic, control schemes and service plans exploiting excess bandwidth and shared <laughs> access networks. It's quite uh, long. You've won a competition for the longest, longest time. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, and my name is, uh, original Korean name is Kyung Soo Kim, but I have been called Joseph for more than 20 years because I've uh, been living and working in the uh, US, UK combined 20 years, and right now I'm also living and working in China. Um, anyhow, yes, yeah, a long time uh, title, but uh, it's quite maybe short because this is still the snapshot of the what's going on. It's not completed yet. So compared to many other excellent presentation, I'm a little bit ashamed because uh, this is not completed yet. But maybe it's uh, good for us to share uh, something from uh, my own experience in this regard. Um, this is a current ISP traffic control architecture. It looks like it's quite complicated, but the message is very simple. Current, uh, you, you can just think about it. Uh, not, not just maybe any new fancy protocol architecture, but Think about the, your own internet access at your home. For example, you pay maybe $100 per month, then the, you, as a return, you're enjoying maybe 10 megabit per second, am I right? Uh, or maybe you're fortunate enough to live in uh, such a, uh, my home country, like Korea, you can enjoy 1 giga or 10 gigabit per second, okay? But problem is that most of the internet access in many countries, nearly all countries, is based on flat service model. Flat service model means whether you're using or not, you have to pay $100 per month or $50 per month. So there is no consideration about actual usage, okay? So the problem is that internet itself is based on packet networking protocol, not uh, like a circuit switching, like a voice communication. So online network architecture and the switching protocols is definitely for variable bit rate, okay? But the current service model, even traffic control architecture, is based on this flat rate and even traffic shaping uh, like a token bucket is also based on a uh, little bit of the fluctuations you usually token bucket, but uh, trying to enforce long term average of the 10 megabit per second, 100 megabit per second, or something like that. So, it, yes, after your flow going through the traffic shaper like a token bucket, Still, a little bit of the fluctuation is uh, possible because of the token bucket itself, but in the long term, your traffic is much like a fixed, like uh, 10 megabit per second, 100 megabit per second, the long term average. So, in this current ISP traffic control architecture, one of the fundamental problems is that. Which one is. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, this is a maybe Ethernet switch. You can consider it as an Ethernet switch or maybe um, IQ router and Mac port filter relay unit. Then we have the typical IS per subscribe traffic controller. But here, the major problem is that the order of the traffic shaper and the scheduler. Currently, the order of the traffic shaper and scheduler like this. For example, there's a traffic from uh, maybe upstream side and egress classifier, later this I will use um, the VLAN ID uh, for classification of the traffic. Then it first goes through token bucket filter or traffic shaper because internet service provider does, uh, are not happy with your excess traffic. So they just want to uh, the filter out or the shaping whatever traffic you pour into the internet but they just make it uh, average, maybe 10 megabit per second, but a very small fluctuations uh, up to token bucket size, okay? So the point is that because this traffic shaper before the scheduler, just imagine that all your uh, neighborhood just go on vacation, you are the only one on the town, okay, during the summer vacation, that means that, that there's a huge available bandwidth and resources available, but because of this current traffic shaper, even though all other people are not using internet at all, but their available bandwidth 
within uh, actually all these users the subscribers that share the common uh, capacity of this uh, distribution five or distribution link am I right even though you are the only active user because of this traffic shaper or token bucket all these boundaries is available from those inactive users are not possible. The funny thing is that the scheduler, current de facto standard is, uh, I think uh, the, in the previous presentation I already mentioned about the weighted uh, fair queuing, I WFQ, is currently de facto standard and then implemented in many of the uh, internet router, has the capability of allocating unused resources from certain uh, users to another one based on the weight, okay? So without this token bucket filter here, just egress plus fire and the flow is directly connected to scheduler, then we can enjoy the allocation of this excess bandwidth. Again, okay? back to the previous scenario, you're the only one in the town, all your neighborhoods go on vacation, then you can enjoy as much as bandwidth available in this link capacity. So this link of S is maybe 100 gigabit per second or 10 gigabit per second, then you can enjoy all unused bandwidth from your neighborhoods, okay? Current scheduler has that kind of capability. The problem is that we are shackled by this token bucket filter. So here's this conflict between subscriber and the internet service providers. Internet service providers for is very simple. Well, if you want to enjoy the more bandwidth, please pay more. <laughs> Even though bandwidth is available, not used by anyone else, it's a simply wasted, but their mind is very simple. You want more than 100 megabit per second, please pay more. That is the current ISP traffic control model and the service plan. So I have been working uh, to improve the current situation since 2011 or 12, maybe four or five years by now. So how can we improve the current situation? First of all, we need to change this traffic control architecture first. So traffic control architecture needs to be changed to allow the use of access bandwidth from other inactive subscribers for those active subscribers. So we need to remove or replace this TVF with something else. And then we also need to come up with a new service plan. So current, as I said before, the most leading the service plan is a flat rate model. So whether you're using or not, but you just have to pay a certain amount of money. Okay? But there's a mismatch between current flat rate service plan and the new traffic control architecture which can allocate unused bandwidth to the other active subscribers. So toward fully shared access, the point is that we are right now enjoying uh, many shared access architecture like a typically PON, passive optical network, Ethernet passive optical network, and also cable internet. Uh, these are two uh, organizations in the, the leading uh, technology for shared access architecture compared to just dedicated access architecture, which is typically a DSL. So DSL case is between the, your the local telecom company and then you, there's only one dedicated line, which is telephone line, okay? But on the other hand, the pawn and the cable, internet, of course, between something in the middle, access switch, and then yourself, is there's a line, but all these lines shared and then integrated. And from that on, there's only one line, which is feeder. Feeder line, feeder fiber. That is the whole point. This feeder line is actually shared by many users. That's why we call shared access architecture. Here, this is a feeder fiber or feeder link. And this is a distribution link. So distribution link, either DSL, cable internet, or PON, you always have such a, a distribution link, okay? But starting in the middle, there is an access switch, so they get all your traffic and concentrate in one distribution fiber link in case of the shared access. The problem is that the current shared access network architecture, even though net that network architecture itself is shared access, but because of this traffic control and flat rate service plan, we as a subscribers or users are not able to enjoy the benefit of shared access architecture. So there's a mismatch between network architecture and traffic control scheme and the service plan.
Okay? So how can we make shared access is really shared access? So share the network resources among all the users. So that's actually my goal in the past four to five years. So I have been working, first of all, ISP traffic control schemes enabling access bandwidth. So current token bucket, token bucket is virtually standard. Palm and the cable internet, they're specify exactly token bucket like a traffic shaper. So maybe compatible with the token bucket in case, but whenever there are inactive users, then how can we allow those excess bandwidth to be used by few active users? So we are, I already have this in a couple of uh, publications. Then next step is that, yes, right now we have the new traffic control schemes which enables uh, access bandwidth allocation. Then how can we use this traffic control architecture for the benefit of both subscriber and also internet service provider? So we need a new service plan because flat rate service plan is not matched with this excess bandwidth allocation, uh, the traffic control uh, architecture. So for these two, uh, I have some uh, existing work. And today's talk is focusing on, yeah, there are certain schemes for traffic control and then schemes for service plan. And how can we implement the simulation models for this proposed traffic control and the new service plan, pricing scheme. This is uh, hybrid traffic control architecture so I proposed about uh, two years ago. Whenever we just introduce something fundamentally new, there's always resistance. Okay, so we want to come to replace the current traffic control architecture with something completely new, then chances are there's no chance for these new proposals to be accepted by a special internet service provider. They believe, that, oh, this is something new, then chances are maybe this is a uh, breaches to my business benefit or what I call it. So in this hybrid traffic control architecture, first of all, except for this uh, shaded area, all the other part, token bucket and regular scheduler is part of the existing traffic control system, okay? And my idea is that rather than just completely replace the current architecture with a new architecture, introduce new architecture as part of the existing architecture. So start small and then uh, gradually increase. Then eventually our goal is that just try to replace, uh, replace all these existing uh, control architecture with this new control architecture. So this is something in the middle, middle phase. Okay? So these new sub subscribers belonging to new service plan, new control architecture, and then subscribers still uh, belonging to existing uh, control and the service plan are can uh, harmoniously be together. Then how can we model this uh, hybrid control architecture? Backward compatibility and the better resource utilization and greater interest I just explained. And the problem is that we're just focusing on the certain uh, proposal and algorithm, uh, maybe early days in the Omnet++, so people just uh, simply implement a certain layer and then forget about the small layer, whatever layer, okay? For example, Ethernet Pond, uh, I, I have been working on the Ethernet Pond, the, the access technology based on the fiber to the home. Most of the earlier work, not just based only for the Omnet++, but most of the work for uh, other tools or whatever, only focus on data link layer. So they just uh, implement the traffic generation only at the data link layer. In other words, Ethernet frame generator. There's no TCP IP or whatever protocol above the data link, no, simply not. But as time goes on, the uh, Omnet++ Plus Plus and the many other simulations framework providing complete protocol stack. So without taking into account other layers, it's not possible to fully estimate the performance. So what I'm trying to say is that the modeling of a hybrid traffic control need to be compatible with other protocols, other nodes, other modules inside, especially Omnet++. Plus Plus. So I'm just choosing VLAN, virtual LAN, already part of the Ethernet standard. And because of this hybrid scheme, 
So we need to uh, identify the subscriber traffic, especially the subscriber traffic of the new service plan. First, need to be identified under the this new traffic control scheme. After that, as a group, the whole group of the new subscribers should be identified as one virtual subscriber again under existing traffic control architecture. So we need a hierarchical identification of the user's traffic. First, new control, traffic control scheme. Then as a group, so under the existing control architecture. Fortunately, IEEE 8.1Q provides stacked VLAN capabilities. So virtual LAN IDs can be stacked. So that means that maybe outer side, we have the one virtual LAN, and all the packets are identified one virtual LAN ID, but certain group of those uh, the packets, we go deep down in there, and then there's another virtual LAN ID, so this kind of stacking is possible, like this. So we can stack. So most of the switches only see this outermost uh, virtual LAN ID. This internal one is actually hidden until this goes into a certain device capable of providing another. This is a service and then customer VLAN. And current standards only uh, provide examples only for two, but in principle, it can stack as many as you want, okay? So, during the paper review, I got certain comments uh, that why you're using just as the standard library, the stack, and not just using Omnet++ on the C object, because C object has many, many nicer capabilities, keep tracking and then the uh, the message uh, during the simulation, blah, blah. But I found it conceptually a little bit difficult to use a certain uh, C object because as far as I know that the current Omnet platform does not provide stack object, am I right? Only just Q or something like that. So, well, we can easily change it uh, into this implementation based on uh, Q or whatever, it's not a big deal, but conceptually, I have a little bit of the uh, reservation because this is really stacked. It's a LIFO, last in the first out, not a FIFO kind of something. Uh, so that's the only major reason I'm just using this stacked object. <coughs> and also another one is that still I'm just uh, uh, to keep the original virtual. This is my original implementation of the VLAN in the my own version of the INET, which is INET HNRL, okay? So to be compatible with this one and also existing the VLAN, even with uh, these uh, stackable tags, but I still put or keep this VID outside of the stack because any older modules still looking for this VID. So in this way, um, this new frame format is still compatible with all the modules because they don't care about this the stack object, but they only checking this VID. Okay, but any new devices can uh, process both of them. So whenever there's a stacking operation, then we just uh, extract a certain tags dips inside the stack and copy into this VID field for compatibility. So this is actually current status of the stack VLAN-based modeling of an access network. You can see that um, this switch is a current ISP traffic control access switch. So until this access switch, group of the subscribers belonging to new service plan actually treated as one group. After that, we are using the inner tag. Then there's a second uh, traffic control scheme as you shown in the, my previous picture, okay? So this is a modular implementation of this um, hybrid control architecture. But there's a, some, uh, this is maybe finer, uh, issue. If we, for example, implement this um, hybrid control architecture as one schedule or one system, there may be no this problem. But uh, I wanted to implement as a modular so rather than just as one big uh, scheduler, 
but I want to use maybe that, that may be the case in the field as well. There is a chance that there is already lots of the access switch which implements current existing traffic control scheme. And my idea is that rather than just completely replace this one or change this one, we keep it, then adding another switch or module implementing this new traffic control scheme. But connecting these two schedulers, we need a certain feedback signal. Whenever, for example, there is a queue is passing a certain threshold, then we need to send a certain feedback signal back to this new scheduler. Still, this is based on the standard, like the Ethernet pause frame, uh, but there's uh, some very strong need to extend this pause frame. Pause frame is just uh, whenever next switch is received this pause frame, they just temporarily stop the whole transmission. Uh, this causes a certain problem in my uh, experiments. What I need is that not just complete uh, stopping of the whole transmission, but whenever there's uh, some back pressure from the previous scheduler to the next scheduler, not stopping whole transmission, but still conformant. Conformant means that there's a traffic shaper or traffic marking. Certain traffic is okay. This is below the, your original specification. That is conformant traffic. But you are beyond a certain level. This is called non-conformant traffic. So whenever this uh, feedback from the previous scheduler, we need to stop only those transmission of non-conformant traffic. The conformant traffic is least limit traffic. So it shouldn't be uh, prevented from transmission. So this is still uh, currently some issues. How can I implement this one uh, without further extending or just a simple based on standard? OK. So I just briefly give you some description of the, what I have been doing in terms of the, this um, access network traffic control and the service plan. And uh, how can I uh, implement or the simulate models of this uh, new traffic control and the service plans. And then just providing the current uh, status of this uh, new hybrid traffic control and service plan based on Omnet plus sign INET HNR especially based on stacked VLAN feature of the IEEE 801Q. Sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no time for the question, so we can do that this during the Time for one small question. Okay. If nobody has one small question, I have one small question. Okay. Like, uh, have you contacted, let's say, local ISPs in Korea and Explaining them your ideas, how willing they were to not, not, not having contacted. <laughs> not having contacted. So that would be, I would say, the hardest part of this plan, you know, to convince, not to convince them that you can make even more money using this scheduler and you can provide better quality of experience to the users. That's a very, 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 very good point. Actually, uh, uh, because of time, I didn't go uh, all the way to this one. But I mentioned about this, and I have been working on this uh, for four to five years, am I right? Mm -hmm. Especially the third reference, this is you can find in my original paper. This paper exactly deals with your comments, because mm -hmm. introduction of this new scheme, then chances are subscribers get the benefit, but ISP maybe lose money, mm -hmm. then chances are, even though this is technically superior, there's no internet service provider to adopt this one. So I'm just a formulate a problem. Okay, in under what condition no one loses? Mm -hmm. This new condition, subscribers, compared to the existing uh, traffic control service plan, no disadvantage. Again, ISP service provider, compared to the previous existing plan, no disadvantage. What would be that condition? Mm -hmm. Then I found that, that even though maybe small range, but there's a certain condition when both can win. It's always like that. We yeah. are speaking about business, it's about technologies who are cheaper and Absolutely you right. Service, so. Absolutely. You, you have a very good point because uh, people like us is always considered the technology, technology, mm -hmm. but in reality, business aspect is actually more yeah. important than technology. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you.